24 home field decision over the Liberty Flames. And as always, uh, your questions, a part of the show, use the hashtag CCBYU, and we'll get to social media a little later on. We begin today's show by saying hello to BYU's defensive coordinator and D-line coach, Elias Tukiaki. Hey, E. Great to be back. Good to see you back. Uh, third straight win uh, for BYU. First time BYU's won three games in a row in a single season since your first season here back in 2016. So uh, good to be on a bit of a roll right now. Yeah, I didn't I didn't realize that, but uh, it's that's important for us to start to string them together. And I, good for the team, good for the team morale as as well as fans and and uh, just getting things back on, back on track. Did it feel like it had been a while since you've been on this kind of run? Or it did it did? It's just been a roller coaster these last couple of years and and. Uh, but, uh, you know, to be able to string some together and uh, I think just, you know, really brings up our confidence and make us feel good about the direction that we're headed. Hopefully keep it going. Well, you knew uh, Liberty had the ability to put up some numbers and get some things done on offense, of course. And they, uh, they take the opening drive on Saturday and they take it 75 yards at 10 plays for the score. It was game on pretty early, wasn't it? It was, you know. They were really well-coached team. Um, the, the quarterback and the receiver we knew going in were good players. But, uh, you know, watching them and playing against them and seeing them live, I was really impressed by, by both the, the big receiver as well as the quarterback. But, you know, they were just, you can just tell that they were a well-coached team and did a really good job. The quarterback was making his 40th consecutive start. He came into the game with uh, 11,000 career passing yards. The numbers alone let you know you're dealing with somebody. That yeah, can, it, it, yeah, it shows the, the, I mean, he, it's been a while since, I, I don't know how long, but, I mean, we didn't get any picks especially with being our, in our drop eight schemes. And um, he was a very, very mature quarterback, just knew where the ball was going, did a really good job with his eyes as far as looking guys off and um, getting the defense to move, you know, just an inch or two with the way that he was, he was moving. And um, I, thought that, uh, I thought that he did a really good job. He's a really good player. Well, BYU scored a touchdown on its opening drive for a third straight game, as it turns out. So it was a 7-7 when your defense gets back on the field. Liberty goes 14 plays on the next drive. They miss a field goal, though. Uh, a little bit of a shot in the arm, because then your offense answered. They go 14 of their own, 14 plays of their own, and take a lead. And once you got the lead, didn't, you didn't give it back. Yeah. Uh, you know, after, I think after the, the, the first two series, when the defense started to settle down and we were able to talk on the sideline and kind of get things moving, I mean, there were still some things even throughout the game that we were, we were adjusting, kind of moving guys around. I don't know if you guys noticed that Diane ended up moving from safety to corner. Uh, just later in the game, but uh, you know, continue to make adjustments. They were making their adjustments, and the boys were playing hard. And you know, the whole idea of just making them earn everything and, and keeping the ball in front of us. You know, the the two touchdowns that happened later on were um, they weren't you know technically trick plays, but they were they were they were plays that were intended to trick us into doing something. And you know, they hit us on a double move once um, on a corner that was playing man to man, and then they hit us on. A uh, throwback. rollout throwback, yeah. which which you know, you, you don't you don't like giving those up, and you kind of <clears throat> great teaching moments for guys that ended up giving up those plays. But uh, you know, going back and looking at it this morning, we watched it as a staff and just thought, you know what, um, we were able to make them earn it, and the way that they earned it were just uh, just kind of uh, lulling us to sleep and, and hitting us on the other side, and we got to play with better better discipline, better technique, but. Uh, um, you know, not bad overall against against a good uh, good offense. You got your first uh, defensive three and out uh, on your third defensive series in. By that time, uh, did you have or how good a sense did you have uh, of Liberty's game plan and how you wanted to play it? I don't I don't think they did uh, very much differently from what we've seen on film. There are a couple of things that they did um, with a little bit more formation in the boundary and some some other things like that. But <clears throat> I just thought that they did a good job executing their game plan. The quarterback didn't didn't make very many mistakes. They uh, you know they snapped off and broke off their routes uh, um, well as as far as reading coverages and all those things. And um, you know they continued to test and just. Uh, Try to see if they can still run the ball on a three-man front. You know, if I think if they would have found something there, they would have continued to come back to it. But it was really just the story of uh, you know trying to see who was more disciplined and in, in, in playing their game plan. And I thought they played there as well. But uh, you know, a couple of those times where they lulled us to sleep, and uh, you know, guys, really, it's just an eye problem mm -hmm. on the double move as well as just the, the throwback. Other than that, you know, um, keeping the ball in front of us and and. Uh, uh, playing stout, stout defense up front, I think, was the game plan and, and uh, played it decently. 
first half especially, uh, they ran a lot of plays, but not for a lot of points. Uh, you get a big fourth down stop after another double-digit play drive late in the second quarter. Keeps it a two-score game. On that drive, they weren't yet still zeroing in on Antonio Gandy-Golden as much as they did in the second half. Lots of run. They had eight rushes and 11 plays. They were committed to that part of their game, at least early. Yeah, yeah. We, we came in and, and uh, did, did some things differently, blitzed a little bit more than, uh, than we had in the past in some of those runs that we ended up giving it up. And so, um, you know, when we came back and talked about on the sideline, we, we, we decided that, you know what, maybe some of the blitzes that we're doing are giving up on the run. Um, having some of the overhangs and having the D lineman not slant might be the better way to play it because the way that they were with the, just their tight splits, we felt like we could we could basically build a big wall with the three D linemen and, and you know, the running back sometimes would get the ball and have nowhere to go and try to, you know, bounce back and forth. And that that's kind of what we wanted so that we can keep the backers back at, at depth to play the RPOs and, and show up late to the run. And uh, going back to, to that, I thought, thought was good. And um, we started to pick and choose uh, blitzing more on the pass situation than we did in the run situation. I thought that paid off. I want to take a look at one more play right before halftime. Uh, by the way, you hit, the, hit the, the break leading by 10, but right before halftime, Flames uh, ran a fake kneel down uh, for 17 yards. Yeah, that's a, it was a good lesson for us where we did, it didn't end up costing us. We've seen it several times, just, you know, college football, there's a lot of people that have done it, um, but it's a great time, great lesson for us to be able to, to teach the boys to never believe it, never buy it. Um, and uh, we've got to get our cleats in the ground and play, play sound football. Okay, you hit halftime leading 17-7. Again, they snapped 43 plays on pace for a pretty decent number, but for only a single score, and it's all about points when it comes down to it. Yeah, yeah. It was, again, on that one, it ended up being, uh, I mean, it, it wasn't a trick play, but they ended up flooding four people to, to the boundary, which is sometimes a little unorthodox. And I thought just schematically they did a good job scheming us and some of the things that we were doing and, and found something. Um, but, uh, you know, overall not bad, just giving up one. Yeah, just one score at the break and, and, and the 10-point lead for BYU. Uh, defensive coaches pretty content at halftime, or what did you think had to be tightened up? In the second uh, in the second 30 you know we when we came out um, we thought the game plan was decent when we ended up settling settling down um, but really you know one of the reasons why we ended up moving die into corners we felt like we needed just more challenge at the corner spot and um, you know giving up giving up some of the hitches that we did giving up some of the shorter routes is what ended up um, setting us up for for the long one um, the, the hitch and go that they ended up doing where we had, had bad eyes because, you know, they, they kept taking what we were giving them, which is some of the underneath stuff. But then eventually uh, we just got to a point where we were driving those so hard, they ended up just hitting with the, with the hitch and go. And so we talked about just challenging more. And that was the one thing that we needed a little bit more of was just challenging in the secondary and, and uh, you know, making them earn it. Uh, some of the things we gave, we were just too soft in coverage. We need to tighten it up a little bit. All right. When we come back, how the Cougs finished off the Flames as we continue our conversation with defensive coordinator Eli Satuiaki. Heading to break, a reminder about BYU football with Kalani Sitake tomorrow night, 8.30 Eastern, 5.30 Pacific on the BYU TV app. Then watch it again Wednesday at 1 Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific on BYU TV. This is the Coordinator's Corner. We're brought to you by JCW's The Burger Boys. Back with more right after this. Are you looking for a better way to deliver results this year? Expanding your product line or building new locations? How about your online presence? Does it need a boost? Maybe you just want to put a little more distance between you and the competition. Tap into the powerful engine of BYU Athletics and let us put together a plan unique to your business. We can provide you with the tools designed to enhance your brand on a local, regional, or national level. We invite your team to join ours. For details, email sponsorship at byu.edu today. Luxurious blanket. Getting cozy with family and friends. A gift for everyone. Minky Couture, official luxury blanket of BYU Athletics. Two top cake makers are battling it out to create the ultimate birthday cake. What the birthday girl wants, the birthday girl gets. It looks delicious. I'm kind of tempted to eat it. Based entirely on one little kid's big imagination. Is this your birthday cake? Yeah. In the end, the birthday girl will pick a winner on Best Cake Wins. 
Travel through time and space to an imagined future or to the corners of the universe. That's brilliant. The show off. That's a good accent. British? I am a very English robot. It's never been done in science fiction before. Special guest, John Reese davis We have the solution to interstellar poverty. Wow. Is there a best acting category in an improvised show? 35 seconds remain. Fourth down and 21 for Liberty. Buckshot Calvert takes a shotgun snap. A three-man rush for BYU. Calvert releases, and it's incomplete near side. Downfield at the line to gain. It appeared that Gandy Gold had his hands on it and could not bring it in. Drops it complete, and BYU will win it. We are back on the coordinator's corner with BYU defensive coordinator and defensive line coach Elisa Tuiaki looking back on BYU's third consecutive win this season. 31-24 home W over Liberty on the weekend. BYU now 5-4 and four on the year with Idaho State coming into town on Saturday. Wrapping up what went down Saturday in the second half, E. Uh, Cougs had a two-touchdown lead a couple times, 24-10 and 31-17. Both times Liberty gets within a single score and a big part of that flame second half and, and hanging in there was uh, the wide receiver we just saw there, Antonio Gandy Golden. Yeah, thought, I mean, he was really, really good player, um, bigger than I thought. You know, watching film was like, okay, we, we knew his stats, but we were out there pregame watching him like, oh man, this, this is a legitimate, legitimate dude. Like, he's mm. big, big, strong, and, and uh, did a really good job. So uh, they call him AGG, and he finishes uh, with 10 grabs for a buck 62 and a score. You've seen a lot of good wideouts in your days coaching, and you've coached against next-level type of guys. Does Gandy Golden have that kind of look to you? He does. He does. You know, he's he's a big physical receiver with good ball skills. Um, you know, I don't I don't know how fast he is top end speed. And I don't you know. And Which I, means a lot next level. Means a lot at the yeah. next level. So yeah. I don't know. You know, he, he's got to have a good good pro day uh, timing. But uh, I mean, outside of that. I think he's a legitimate player. I think he's one of the one of the better receivers we've seen in a while. And, and smaller school, but still a big challenge for your guys. He was on the yeah, 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 for sure. Just he was uh, he was hard to defend. Liberty quarterback Buckshot Calvert ends up going at 27 for 45 for 303 and three scores. So on the year, he's up to now 23 touchdowns and only three picks. You talked about how poised he looked. You could tell he's a, a career guy. Ends the day as Liberty's career completions leader. He was already the leader in passing yards and passing touchdowns. This guy can sling it. Yeah, yeah. It's the, uh, I mean, you, you said it. The way that he looked, how seasoned he was, and just he looked really poised, knew where to go, guiding things with his eyes, the timing as far as just getting rid of the ball, and uh, thought, thought he was just good. A couple of defensive notes uh, for you guys. Uh, you started Shaman Willis at, at corner. I think it's a second start. Um, he's a kid who's kind of risen up the depth chart all season for you, hasn't he? Shaman's done a good job. Um, you know, he's uh, he's he's a, he's really smart, really intelligent kid. Does a really good job. Uh, kid that loves football and and uh, you know just plays hard. And so we've uh, we've been pleased to have him on the team. You know, he ended up transferring to us, and I think he belongs here. You know, because of the legacy, and ended up switching his number to his dad's number. So I think it was a, it was yeah. a good good good, uh, good game for him to be able to be out there and play. Yep. So uh, uh, he was in 29. Uh, Hayden Livingston went right. He was in, uh, yeah, he was in 32. 32 or 33, yeah. That's going to go to Chris Wilcox. Yep. And then Hayden Livingston was, uh, I, I think, in 29. He yep. ended up going to 22 so that Shaman could wear 29, Jamal's yep. old number. Yep. All right. right. It makes some sense <laughs> to somebody out there. All right. Uh, some other names of note uh, from Saturday uh, Austin Lee, uh, five tackles and a PBU. All of his stops were solo stops. Same deal for Kyrus Tonga. Uh, four tackles, all were solo, including a huge TFL. Yeah, that that uh, TFL that he had came at the right moment, and you know he did a the the thing about players like that. I mean, like Diane, you know, uh, Kyrus now is is uh, those plays become routine. It's like that's another day at the office for those type of type of kids. But um, you know they continue to show up in in uh, big moments and make plays for us that we need. And that uh, third down stop that Kyrus had was huge. So you speak about Diane. Uh, how nice to have the versatility of somebody that can go corner, safety, safety, corner with, uh, just make it seamless for you. Yeah, yeah. Now that he's played back and forth, I mean, it's, we trust him to, to put him anywhere, and, and he brings toughness to the group no matter where we put him. No takeaways in this game for the first time since the Utah game. So it had been a while. Um, BYU still, I think, top 15 in, in turnovers game, though, so it's still a pretty good number. Uh, you win a game while minus in the margin. You don't want to roll your dice too often on that, but yet uh, you did win it at minus two. Yeah, that was, you know, 
Um, I don't I don't know what the percentages are, but we've got to do a better job on defense taking the ball away because you don't you know being minus two is a I think is a big deal, and we ended up getting away with one of them and had had a little bit of luck on our side as far as just them missing a field goal as well as uh, the last play of the game where the receiver dropped it, but. Um, you know, being minus two in the in the in the turnover margins, uh, not a good stat. And so, we certainly want to flip that over on our side of the ball. BYU now in the Sitake era, uh, four and thirteen, when minus in the margin. So it can happen. You get the occasional win that way, but again, not something that you want to look at for long term long term success. Uh, time now for us to identify your defensive player of the game from Liberty. Who'd you pick? We picked uh, uh, D'Angelo Gun. Uh, Gunther, Mandel, Mandel, yeah, yeah. And, formerly uh, Gunther, yeah, yeah, and so he's he's done a uh, really good job with just his development, and really for us, I think it's th it's uh, throwing a, a kid that's worked really really hard at his craft, the bone. Um, you know, there's certainly other guys on there like Kyrus and Diane that are kind of like just showing up and doing their thing and doing a good job, but he came up and made made uh, two huge stops in in, in, in tackles. Uh, really, really challenged in the game, and sometimes those type of corners don't don't show up unless they they get picked on. But I mean, he was he did a really good job challenging and showing up, and you know, uh, breaking the ball up and and just driving on balls. But the the tackling is really where we were impressed, and um, really wanted to throw him kudos for that because of uh, his development. I think sometimes, especially for a kid coming from high school to, to college. Um, it's just about it's just about building confidence and getting them to where they need to be. And once they know they can do it and and uh, feel good about it, um, you know, it, they they take off in their career. And so we're hoping that this is a turning point for him because it's a really really good game. I think the best best game he's played since he's been here. How would you assess your team's corner depth right now through nine games? It's it's still uh, it's still the 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 position on our defense that probably has the least depth. But uh, really with Chris Wilcox coming back and the ability to move Dion back and forth, um, we feel pretty good now, you know, with those those guys and um, so now the safety spot's probably gonna be the one that doesn't have as much depth, but being able to move Dion back and forth, if the corners can show that they can play, then we'll end up moving Dion back to safety and have a little bit more depth there. But Chris Wilcox coming back um, for the rest of the year is going to be huge for us. You know, you're at that point right now where there are three regular season games and a, po and a bowl game remaining. That will give you four. So guys who haven't played can still play in this last uh, month or so and, and keep a, a year of eligibility, right? Yep, yep. And that's that's the plan with bringing Chris back. And we've been really careful with him. And um, Troy know. Warner, same deal? or? Yeah, Troy Warner's the same deal. And then some of these other red shirts we think are, have, have uh, shown to uh, – uh, maybe bring depth to to both the safety and the corner spots and so we'll have some of those kids out there and, and we'll see what they can do. So we should expect to see Chris and Troy at some point here in the next few games. You can definitely plan on seeing them this next game. Great and, and Idaho State's a game generally too where uh, you hope things go well enough where you're able to play a, a bunch of guys. Right? Yeah, 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 that'll that's that's the plan. That's yeah. the hope. Yep, we okay. got to get out there and execute. Okay, so D'Lo Mandel is your defensive player of the game. Coach Ed Lamb gave us his special teams players of the game, and since they're both guys that you coach, we'll talk about them. And he he uh, he gives us the top rock and the top block awards on special teams, and uh, Max Tooley for top rock and Isaiah Kofusi for top block on this day. Yeah, you know Max gets it because he he just does a phenomenal job in all in all phases of the coverage units where he goes down and is an unblockable person and gets down and, and does a really good job just making plays and you know Isaiah's uh, for the top block there weren't very many opportunities with in the in the return games but that uh, surprise on sides the he handles it he handled it and and, and got, and got up. rocked pretty good actually <laughs> got rocked pretty good. He, took a, he took a hit popped back up was really super excited about it we were too I mean that was a, that was a huge play at that uh, at that point in the game were you aware that could be something to, to look that's, for? That's something that we were, uh, you know, warning them, warning them about or just getting prepped for all the time. Just, hey, pr be prepared. See the ball kick. Make sure you're not rolling out. And, um, I mean, you know, Isaiah is just that type of guy. He's very, very disciplined, does a really good job with just his eyes and doing his assignment and uh, came up with a big play when we needed it. Absolutely. Those are our players of the game from this past weekend. We'll talk with Coach Grime on the offensive side in the next half hour. Break time. And a reminder that uh, dinner after the game at JCW's includes something for everybody, from burgers to wings, shakes to salads, JCW's quality, and a lot of it in Lehigh, American Fork, Provo, South Jordan, and now open in Harriman. Coming up on Saturday, it is BYU against Idaho State on Senior Day at Lavelle Edwards Stadium. BYU radio coverage begins with Cougar pregame live at 1 p.m. Eastern to kick at 3 Eastern, 1 Mountain, noon Pacific on BYU Radio. Coming up next, our final segment with 
defensive coordinator and D-line coach Elisa Tuiaki. You're in the coordinator's corner brought to you by JCW's The Burger Boys. Back with more right after this. With the BYU license plates, no matter where you are, you show your cougar spirit and you make it possible for students to get an education. The donation you make when you get the license plates goes to support BYU scholarships. So whether spreading cougar pride coast to coast or getting to the big game, you're also funding scholarship opportunities for BYU students. Learn about free special plates today at alumni.byu.edu slash plates. We are the Cleggs. And we own a therapeutic riding facility. We try to make someone that's broken and help them heal personally so they can have a better life. With Desert First, they're about the people. And they always believed in us no matter what. 20 something years, we've never had a permanent home. This will be our forever home, sorry. <laughs> so we can leave a legacy. My name is Tamara Tanner Clegg. My why is changing people's lives. Everyone really can help someone. Fourth down and two, and BYU goes to pistol. The hand clap, the belt high snap, the sprint left, the throw to Hifo, the first down and more. 35 30, 25 20, he's gone. 10 5, touchdown, 11 Hifo on fourth and two. It's a 41 yard score. You're in the coordinator's corner, brought to you by JCW's, the Burger Boys. BYU now 5-4 and four on the season, one win away from bowl eligibility as the Cougs get set for Senior Day by hosting Idaho State this coming Saturday. Well, for the record, uh, BYU's never lost to an FCS team. The Cougs 13-0 against FCS programs all time, and the average margin of victory, roughly 40 points. So, Coach Tuiaki, besides the win, what are the objectives in this kind of game? It's a bye game. FCS team comes in. They're 3-7. and seven. Uh, yeah, you want to win. What else needs to get done? And, and what do you want you guys to be really cognizant of in this kind of week? In this kind of week, you know, a lot of times, and really even last week, um, sometimes you, you, you go into the game thinking that you're going to come to halftime 50-0, to zero, and then you come into halftime and you're, you're only up 17-10 to 10, or whatever the case is, then, you're, then you're, you're down even though you're still winning. And so it's really about, um, I think it's focusing on, on making sure that everyone's doing their job, that they're playing hard and that the energy's there on the sideline. And um, Galani addressed that in our, at our halftime speech this last game, that he wanted to see more, more celebration and the small victories instead of everybody just sitting there watching the game. Mm. Um, more, more people that aren't playing, contributing more to the, to the team as far as just the energy and the juice that they bring. And so I think in these type of games, you've got to make sure that you come out and you're you're executing, right? Obviously, you're playing to win, but you're executing, not seeing very many mistakes. And and uh, when you do end up executing and and uh, making plays and scoring and and uh, getting a lead, give guys an opportunity to get in there and play. And um, some of the young guys, some of the red, shirt, red shirts, and see see some of the development on their side. Some of the things that could bring the juice on Saturday would be, you know, a it's Senior Day. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, it's bowl eligibility day, you hope, as well. And then for teammates who have seen some of their, uh, their brothers not play a lot, hopefully get in and start making plays in this kind of game. Those are all things that could kind of bring energy. Yep, absolutely. If, uh, I mean, when the offense is scoring, defense is, is getting off the field, and all of a sudden the, the margin, the score ends up separating a little bit, there's definitely, I think that's juice in itself that's brought, and, and uh, everyone's really, really excited about that. But it is, it's, it's exciting when you're, 
you've been going against somebody on the scout team for a long time, someone that's been red shirt, and then you see them get an opportunity to get out there and, and play with passion and make plays. I mean, that's exciting for, for, uh, for your team. It will be the final day in the stadium for your seniors. Let's talk about the, some of the guys on the BYU defense who will be playing their final home games. We may not hit them all here, but a few main ones. Uh, J.J. Nwigwe, Trajan Peely, Dian Gomoloku, Austin Lee, uh, Bo Tanner. Austin Kofensis has come around to you. Uh, Sawyer Powell, the name of a few guys. Yeah, you know, I, th those guys have all done a really good job. Um, you know, some of them have had bigger roles on the field, but um, as far as just being great teammates and and uh, doing what was best for the team and just being there the whole time and just really, really pushing for, for wins and just doing what they can. Um, really, really excited. I mean, JJ moved over to us, and he's a kind of a revelation for you, right? fight starter. Yeah, and yeah. He's, he's done a really good job. And you know, some of the, the NFL scouts have come in and been curious about him because he's, he's big, long, tall, he's strong, and I think he'll have a chance to hopefully get into a camp. But mm. you know, guys like Trajan, that uh, whose uh, role changed a little bit, but Trajan's always been the dependable guy for us. He's done a really good job with just helping with the development of the younger players, and uh, Sawyer Powell's the same way. But uh, these guys have all contributed to the to the team and it's uh, it's progress these last few years well you're one win away from bowl eligibility as we talked about it'll be a massive surprise if you're not six and four a week from now the game after that is UMass uh, what will it mean to this team to be playing in the postseason uh, for a third time in four seasons under Kalani Sitake it'll be huge for us you know huge for us is uh Going into the season, I know there's a, there were a lot of questions. There was a lot of doubt that we'd even make it to to the postseason. And um, you know, obviously, we feel like we let a couple slip away earlier in the year. But to be at this point and for us to finish strong would be huge. But then for us to be in the postseason would be be a huge uh, compliment to the team, to the players, and to the coaches and all the work that we put in. Okay, social media question now from Amy Bangeter Jones at Ames Flames on uh, Twitter. What was the difference in the defense you played against Boise State and Utah State against what was there against Liberty on the weekend? The defense is probably a little bit more like it was against um, Utah State because the schemes were more similar. The Boise was just, Boise was a different animal. And so it, uh, it allowed for a little bit more uh, pressure opportunities. Um, you know, we blitzed a little bit more in that one. But in this one, in, in this game, um, you know, with the quarterback that was that good, I thought Jordan Love was good too, but, um, you know, the quarterback didn't make mistakes and, and it was really about um, not, not giving up big plays by doing things that just, you know, you end up blitzing six guys and you don't get there. You know, we did it a couple times where we ended up sending four or five and the fourth and fifth guys weren't even close. The ball was already gone. And so I think it's, it was really, more, the game plan was more similar to Utah State than it was to Boise, but, um, that was that was probably the biggest difference. Okay, how would you describe the team's defensive identity now as you head toward the, down the home stretch? Uh, you know, the identity lately has really been uh, playing the RPOs and playing drop eight and all that. Um, you know, looking. I haven't really looked much at you at uh, Idaho State yet, which we'll look at it. Look at UMS as well. Might be one of those games where it uh, puts us back into a, a three down front, four down front, maybe blitz more, a little bit more. Don't know for sure, but uh, it's really um, us trying to keep points off the board and doing what it takes to, to uh, keep those points off the board. All right, E, good to visit with you again and uh, all season. Uh, good luck against Idaho State, getting that sixth win and uh, making plans for the postseason. Thank you again. Thank you. All right, that is Coach Elisa Tuiaki. BYU TV getting you ready for the Cougars and Bengals of Idaho State this Saturday. From LaVelle Edwards Stadium, watch Countdown to Kickoff. Saturday 2 Eastern 11 a.m. Pacific the game on BYU TV and BYU radio with postgame coverage on both BYU TV and BYU radio coming up next offensive coordinator Jeff Grimes joining us in the coordinators corner live from Studio C on BYU TV we're back with that right after this stay with us welcome to a partnership where customer experience comes first it's our focus. It's your expectation. We provide support to those that go the extra mile for all of us. Supplying products, training, and service for generations. Learn more at BradyIndustries.com. Call it a path. or way through. It can be arrow straight or have twists and turns. It's life's financial journey and Mountain America Credit Union is here to guide you every step of the way with timely advice 
and affordable products. This is your journey. Let's begin together. We're Mountain America, guiding you forward. Ready to have some fun? On trick! We light up the room! Wait, how did you do that? I think I um, should probably go lay down a little bit. Yeah. Scare up some laughs. <laughs> and stretch the imagination. Oh! <laughs> like, I don't get it. This episode's gonna be juicy. Coordinator's Corner brought to you by JCW's The Burger Boys. We start our second half hour of the show by welcoming in offensive coordinator Jeff Grimes. Hello, Coach. How you doing? Very well. Good. Uh, Saturday night, Lavelle Edwards Stadium, 31-24 win over Liberty. Second straight game with 30-plus points. Third straight win. First three-game win streak since you've been back in Provo. Uh, BYU's in a good spot as, as we get late in the season. A uh, heck of a lot better than it was, uh, say, four weeks ago. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. Um, I think our team's really responded well. And... Um, and, and as you alluded to, I think we're moving in the right direction, making improvement in a lot of areas. Now, the points will always be the thing, uh, but what's, what's led to the fact where it feels almost like a, kind of a traditional BYU offense in terms of how you're producing? Well, I think um, we've just been able to get more consistency out of, out of our players. We've been able to kind of get into a little better, little better run pass flow, and, and um, I think we're achieving enough balance right now that teams have to respect our ability to do both. And that certainly opened up the passing game, and then you just, I don't think you can, um, you can, you can overstate um, how well our, our quarterbacks and receivers have played of late in the past three games. We've just had a lot of consistency from those guys, and they're really in rhythm and playing well together. You bring up receivers, I'll just throw it out there. I was doing some research on this, and, and the season drop rate is 5%. Uh, that's one of every 20 looks that you get your hands on you're not bringing in. H how would you assess that number right there? Yeah, I don't know what the normal number yeah, is. I, mean, I just uh, know that ours is much less than, than what I've been accustomed to. Yeah. Um, I, I feel very confident that when we, when we put the ball in the air, if we can get our hands on it, um, we're going to come down with the ball, especially our receivers. Those guys are just really, really confident and, and um, remarkably consistent. Uh, what did you think you'd get from Liberty's defense compared to what you did get? Um, well, I felt like we would get their best shot as a team. Um, I think it was their first um, nationwide television game, national TV game, um, an opportunity to come and, and play against a, a, another team that they have respect for, I feel like, in our stadium. And just from the comments that I heard from their coaches and players, I felt like we would get their best shot, and we did. Um, I thought their defense played a little bit more aggressively, pressured us, and played a little bit more man coverage than what I anticipated. Um, with some of the deep balls we've hit in the last couple of weeks, I thought they'd play off of us a little bit more, but they weren't afraid at all. They came in and and uh, and got after us and, and played hard and blitzed quite a bit. It was the fifth straight game BYU played with a starting quarterback who was different from the one who started the game before. Last five games goes Wilson, Hall, Romney, Hall, Romney. Uh, how did your quarterback work week go in terms of who was getting the work leading up to Liberty? Well, we had a little bit better idea this week than what we have had the past couple. So that was that was a positive and um, hopefully we're we're moving in a healthier direction with more guys available. So how close are, are say, Zach and Jaron Hall to actually being available to you? I think Zach is much closer, and I think Jaron is still day-to-day. -day. Anytime a guy's in the concussion protocol, there's uh, a certain set of standards that he's got to pass to move on to the next step. And he's not quite there yet, but I think there's a, a decent opportunity in the next week, or if not, then the next week after that. Could we see Zach getting cleared for Idaho State? Yes. Okay. If he is cleared, is he automatically the starter considering his position when he went out? Um, I think that's a tough, tough thing to, to speak against given how well he's played, his, his volume of work, and 
um, and the fact that he had been the clear proven starter prior to that. But we really haven't discussed it as a staff yet, so that'll be. He hasn't. He hasn't really practiced yet. Um, this would be the week for that, I guess. This would be the week to find that yeah. out. Yeah. Okay. Well, meantime, uh, Baylor Romney uh, getting better with every rep. It seems uh, BYU has wins in his two starts, and his relief work against Utah State was particularly impressive. Uh, it's about as much as you could hope for from any number three to begin a season. Absolutely no question. I, I've said it several times. I, I've just not been in a position where you had three quarterbacks. I've not been in a position where you had two quarterbacks as good as we do. Um, mm -hmm. So just really fortunate to have uh, have guys that can come in and play like that. And, and Baylor just continues to show his poise and confidence and just Really, really impressive. Indeed. Uh, to the Liberty game a little bit. It's a third straight game, Coach, that uh, BYU scores a touchdown on its opening drive. First time that's happened in the Satake era. BYU now 8-2 and two under Kalani with six straight wins when you do score an opening drive touchdown. And uh, Saturday, it was uh, Micah Simon getting your first score on what looked like uh, Gunnar Romney's play the week before. Yeah, it was. <laughs> and, and, uh, and his big catch to, to get us down there right. close on the, on the big play. Um, but... Can't say enough about my, about Micah. Just a great game. We chose him for our player of the game. Um, threw for a touchdown, called a touchdown. Uh, Did have a rush, but not for a touchdown. He wanted the hat trick. It didn't happen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, but just I've I've, um, I've seen many times over my career a player advance from one year to the next. Certainly, but I don't know if I've seen a larger improvement from a guy going into his senior year, from where he was last year to where he is now, not only as a player, but as a leader. And just such a tremendous young man. There's not anybody that I could be, could be happier for than him right now. I believe still leading BYU in third down conversions as well, illustrating kind of a go-to nature that Mike has adopted this year. Yeah, yeah really, really has. And to, to run his route the right way, get open, then you know if you get in the ball, he's going to get all he can get after that. So uh, on Saturday, you scored on your first three drives, uh, only five possessions in the first. It was, uh, yeah, really only five possessions mm -hmm. in the first half. Last two possessions were three and outs, in part because you got off schedule there, either holding penalties or sacks in those last two drives. Yeah, both both had two penalties in a, two holding penalties in a row. In one of them, we were a little bit conservative with a minute left and, and having a lead, but um, uh, obviously certainly pleased to have scores on our first three possessions, something that we haven't done yet. Um, so I, I felt like that got us off to a really good start and, and put us in a good place going into halftime. And BYU scored in every quarter as well for a second straight game. And that hadn't happened since, I think, New Mexico State last year. And now suddenly back-to-back -back games, consistent scoring means a great deal. Uh, so the TD that puts you up 17-7 to uh, has you calling on the arm of the former high school quarterback, Mike Simon. He did throw for a touchdown, as you noted a minute ago. Yeah. And he's thrown a couple passes the last couple of weeks. Yeah. We, we give him a hard time because although he talks about his uh, passer rating, his passes <laughs> leave something to be desired. But, you know, on plays like that, um, it's obviously not your quarterback throwing it. But if you have guys that are, that are playing skill positions, um, and you see the play right there, uh, he took quite a blow on that. But uh, if you have a guy that plays a skill position that can also throw, it's quite a weapon. And even in the Utah State game, he's paid a price on his two throws. Yeah, yeah, he has. And he's a tough kid because he, you know, he looked up to see if he scored, but then they took him in the tent to check his arm out. He took, like I said, he took quite a blow on that yeah. arm, but got it wrapped, came back in and played well. If you take a 17-7 lead to the locker room, how pleased were you with a two-score advantage in a half where you averaged 7.4 yards per play? That's a good, pretty good number. Yeah, I thought it was a good start. Didn't like the way that it ended with the penalties right there towards the end. Um, but I thought we were, were moving in the right direction. Felt like we needed to get in a little bit better rhythm, particularly with our run game. Um, felt like we had had big plays, but, some, but a couple of uh, negative plays that, that we didn't need to have as well. Okay, break time. Coming up, how, extend, uh, how the Cougars extended a lead and hung on to it to beat Liberty. And we get Coach Grimes, offensive player of the game, again from uh, last Saturday. This is the Coordinator's Corner. We're brought to you by JCW's, the Burger Boys. We're live in Studio C. Back with more after this. We kissed last night. What? It was Steve or Ben. I hope it was Ben who reminds me of your father. Mom, what are you doing here? I need to make sure that you're eating right, so I'm moving in. What? No, Mom, there's not enough room. I've solved that problem. Don't worry, Jenny's fine with it. Who wants waffles? Huh? Yeah. BYU meal plans, because Mom shouldn't be there. 
Dexter & Dexter is a full-service law firm offering a wide range of legal services. Since 1995, we have helped more than 20,000 Utahns both to navigate life's challenges and to make the most of life's opportunities. From car accidents to business law, from divorce to estate planning, we are passionate about shouldering your burdens. To learn more about scheduling a no-obligation consultation, visit DexterLaw.com. Get outside with the ones you love and enjoy the open road. And the closed one. We believe in family, fun, and experiences that last. And we want to be there as you make new memories over and over again. That's why we're proud to carry the popular Nissan Rogue. Tim Daly Nissan Southtown. Family owned since 1968. right now for a sketch I wrote called Titanic. The sketch takes place on one of the life dinghies after the Titanic has hit the iceberg and there are some women on the ship who are excited to start their new life possibly. Are we recording? Actually, they're just interviewing me because I, I wrote the sketch. Oh. <laughs> Baylor goes under center with trips to the right. Center snap, double throw. Simon downfield. Bushman makes the catch. 15 10. He's going to go in. Touchdown, Matt Bushman from Micah Simon. Back on the coordinator's corner as we sit down with BYU offensive coordinator Jeff Grimes. Coach coming off that 31 24 home win over Liberty two days ago. Coach, you're up 17 7 at the break. Had a good drive going to start the third quarter, and Sony Final was uh, having a nice drive running it until uh, BYU has a fumble near the red zone. Yeah, I felt like that was, that. you know, the last two weeks we've, we've hurt ourselves with two turnovers. Um, and I, I felt like even, even more than losing the possessions, they were momentum killers. And, uh, and I love Siona. He's such an aggressive runner, and he's really, really developing this year. Um, but just didn't get two hands on the ball soon enough right there. And, and uh, golly, we were running the ball so well that drive. I yeah. really thought we were about to just take the game over. And, and uh, that was unfortunate at that moment. But I know he didn't, he didn't want to fumble it, and I'm sure he'll learn from it. I think the other fumble you reference comes, even though it was really early, it could have put you up 14 nothing in Logan. Is that the one you're talking about? Yeah, yeah exactly. I have a tone setter. And, uh, yeah, would have changed the feel, certainly. Well, next time you get the ball, a uh, really nice scoring play on a fourth and two from the Liberty 41. That touchdown followed a timeout. How did that discussion play out, and then maybe the play that got you in the end zone? Yeah, we were right at, right at that spot on the field where you could have done a number of things. You know, we could have punted it, um, could have run the ball, could have thrown it, and we talked about it, and then... Uh, and then actually changed the play during during the break. Uh, we talked it over and, and felt like this would be a great option. They'd been aggressive and been playing man against us, so we felt like we had a, a great shot there to just throw a little a little pick play and a, and a, a toss behind the line of scrimmage to Aleva. And with his running skills, obviously he did the rest. Micah had a nice block and and um, he did the rest with his feet. And Aleva just solidifying his well earned reputation as a, as a prime playmaker for you. No question. And, you know, he really had a great week of practice. And um, I think he's, he's still improving, you know, came back from that shoulder surgery. And, and I don't think he's quite been himself the first half of the year. But I still think he's getting better. And I think we'll see even better things from him the latter part of the season. Okay, so you had a 24-10 lead there, uh, later a 31-17 lead. Each time Liberty gets back in the game to close within a score, it was a pretty good offense, uh, Liberty's that is. They did a great job hanging with BYU. They did. I thought they had a great game plan. They, um, they certainly ate up a lot of clock and uh, put us in a position where we were frustrated, wanting the ball mm -hmm. back as soon as we could get it as an offense. And then they did a really nice job as a defense as well. They changed up the looks on us, and at times they played off, and then at times they, they played aggressively. So they, they had a great game plan and played, played well. Okay, to late fourth quarter, 90 seconds to play. A first down or points basically in the game. It's another fourth and two for you. You just run a scrum uh, for a short gain earlier. Uh, Peeney gets you five on a conventional run. You can go scrum again. You can go traditional offense. You can kick a field goal, or you can try for a fake, and fake was the call. Yeah, it was something that, that um, they had, the special teams um, had practiced all week, and they felt good about it and uh, just didn't quite execute it well enough. 
Is everyone kind of making a bit of a case during that time, or how does that all play out, generally speaking? Yeah, there's a lot of discussion going on, obviously. Um, Kalani has the, the final say on, on the decisions at, at that moment, and, you know, it's one of those things just like, you know, we had two specials or trick plays that we called in this game, and one of them was a touchdown, the other was an interception, but it, it's not going to keep us from doing them in the future. You know, I think um, when you take chances like that, sometimes they pay off, sometimes they don't. Um, but I think we, we've shown our opponents that we'll, we'll try about anything, so you better be ready for it. I think Scrum came on second and nine. Were you going for a look there? I think Kalani hinted that they thought something might, something might break there as well. Yeah, you know, as I've said before, Scrum is kind of practiced as more of, our, of a special teams play for us, so I don't have a whole lot to do with that. Um, it's, more, it's more Ed and Kalani's deal, and so they just they felt like we could get something there, and, and so they chose for it in the moment, and then we switched back, and like you said, we were just a little bit short of, of getting the first down. But even though we didn't score on that drive, I thought we did a decent job of getting a couple of first downs, chewing up some clock, mm -hmm. and, and at least putting them in a, in a challenging position. They got the ball back. Liberty got the fourth down on that ensuing late game possession. Uh, Gandy Golden on the sideline, pass breakup in the back from Kafusi, and BYU wins it 31-24. Uh, Let's get to your uh, player of the week on offense. You noted last segment that uh, Mike Simon did enough to earn that call for you this week. Yeah, just like I said, really, really pleased with him overall this season. Glad that he had such a great game. You know, nearly 100 yards receiving, a lot of it coming on that really big play. Um, threw a pass for a touchdown, caught a pass for a touchdown, rushed the, with the football, and did a lot of the things behind the scenes that a lot of people would never notice, like that block on, on the Levis big scoring play. So just really, really Im impressed with, with his leadership and his play. It's always nice when you can uh, make, a, make a completion through PI, which he did on that one long pass. Yeah, he did a great job of, of, uh, of coming down with the ball, and that, you know, it's something he's done all year. So. I just have a ton of confidence in him right now. And, and when you were talking earlier, it's not, not that he's, uh, I mean, he's a good model to hold up in terms of uh, how you play a career out. Uh, you no really course. can't judge it until you're yeah. done, right? You know, last year, uh, for whatever reason, the plays just weren't, weren't coming his way early in the season, and he was a little bit frustrated. Um, but what he did is he had a lot of opportunities on special teams, and he became our best special teams player, running down on kickoffs with reckless abandon, mm -hmm. and then ended up coming around a little bit more and making a few plays on offense later in the season, um, but just continued to work rather than getting frustrated, or like so many players do nowadays, if it isn't going well, I'll just go somewhere else, yeah. right? Um, just has continued to work, and, um, and, and it's paying off for him now. All right. Thank you, Jeff. Time again for a short break. As we do, this reminder that for your day-to-day -day Cougar sports play-by-play, -play, tune in to Sports Nation weekdays at noon Eastern time on BYU TV and BYU Radio. Coming up in our final segment of this week's show, Coach Grimes looking ahead to Senior Day and what uh, should be the day we hope that uh, BYU Cougars punch their postseason ticket. You're in the Coordinator's Corner, brought to you by JCW's The Burger Boys. We're live in Studio C on BYU TV. Whether it's for you or for them. For you or for them. For you or for them. You can find it here. This is where we dominate. Our playground, place of business. This is our promised land, where we seek to find ourselves, and we're here to make sure the spaces our best prove themselves on appear how they should. Intermountain Healthcare, official medical provider for BYU Athletics. It's me, Kirby. My mission? Get into Old School Cafe. Thank you. We'll give you a call. Meet the founder, Teresa Goins. <laughs> Work alongside the staff and see how a restaurant runs. You're welcome. See why they do it and figure out how I can help. I don't know which one those are. And five, hope they don't realize that I'm not the best cook. All right, those even sound like me. <laughs> I'm 
James Maslow. I'm Keaton Simons. I'm Jaleel White. That's my stepdad, Eric Roberts. I'm not getting any younger, James. I hear you, Pops, which is why I've set aside seven days. I'll know everything about it, and he'll know nothing about it. <laughs> oh, Mommy. Yeah, I want to see that. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. Do it again? Corner is brought to you in part by JCW's The Burger Boys, Bailey's Moving and Storage, more than just a move, Siegfried and Jensen, serving Utah families for over 25 years. We are in our final segment of the Coordinator's Corner, live from Studio C, coming up Saturday at Lavelle Edwards Stadium. It's uh, Senior Day, 5-4, and four, BYU hosting 3-7, and seven, Idaho State. Cougars looking to extend their perfect 13-0 record all-time against FCS programs. Coach Grimes, how do you look at uh, these FCS games within the framework of a season? Well, I think the most important thing is that it's our next game. And uh, for us, there's still so much improvement we can make. Um, you know, we, we, uh, we're certainly happy that we won that game this past week, but still a lot of improvement. Turning the football over two times, two weeks in a row now, I felt like really, as I alluded to earlier, we really hurt our momentum at key times in the game. Um, and then we've got to eliminate some of these penalties. I thought the one penalty was, was not the right call on the screen. Um, we, we shouldn't have had that one, but the others, we had a key false start at the wrong moment, had a couple of holding penalties, and so we're going to try to clean up some things and then, and then continue to develop some of these young guys and hopefully put an even better product on the field this Saturday. Postseason eligibility on the line, and at 2-4 uh, and four on the season where you were, bull bid wasn't exactly a sure thing that week. Uh, the objective now is to win six and just keep on winning, of course, but what would number six mean uh, for this team, this program? Well, I think it, it just continues to further the narrative that we're on the right track. You know, we're, we're, as we've talked about here before, we're playing with a number of young guys um, that are that are still progressing and and making improvement in their game. And I think for us to take another step forward just is one more one more step on the on the ladder towards where we want to ultimately end up. Saturday will be senior day. Uh, among players suiting up at Lavelle Edwards Stadium for the final time, we may miss a couple here, but uh, Talon Shumway, uh, MLP, uh, Aleva Hifo, Micah Simon, Emmanuel Lasupa, Addison Pulsifer, Thomas Schof. It's a good group. <laughs> yeah, as always, you miss those, you miss those guys. Um, and, and, you know, I think this group, um, particularly this group of uh, senior receivers, wow, what they've given to this program, you know. We've already talked about Micah. Um, we've talked about Aleva a little bit, just his willingness to do whatever he's called on to do. Talon Shumway, um, just there's, I think I've said this before, there's not anyone on our team that gives any more than him on a daily basis. You know, he's got all sorts of injuries. He kind of looks like the bionic man when he comes out to practice some days. It takes him a little while to get going, but um, just his unbelievable toughness and competitiveness, not only catching the ball, but blocking. And, you know, I could say something about all those guys. Um, but in particular, yeah, we'll, we'll miss those guys. In particular, miss that group of senior receivers. Who I wasn't mentioning were, were starting offensive linemen, meaning you bring a line back for the most part. Yeah, right. yeah, which is certainly a, a real positive. And, yeah. and that group is is certainly improving, still a work in progress, not where not where we want them to be, but but I think making progress every week, and we've had to play musical chairs there a little bit, but yeah. the good news is we continue working with some young guys who I think um, are still moving in the right direction. I may as well ask, we haven't talked about uh, Tristan Hodge. Does he get back maybe this season, do you hope? Um, Tough to sure. say? Yeah, not okay. sure yet. A keeper in the same boat, we just don't know. Uh, Kiefer probably even a little bit more hopeful, but okay. not yet. Okay. Maybe in, in a couple of weeks. All right, social media question here from uh, Vance Johnson. He says, uh, BYU's receivers are making tons of tough catches this year and maybe even more than in recent years. Has the team been doing different drills? What have you done to help that improve? We talked a little bit about it earlier, but how good the reliable the receivers have been for you. Yeah, I, I don't think there's anything different that we've been doing. You could ask Bessie, but from what I've seen, he's doing the same things that he did last year. We've been emphasizing the same things, uh, but I think they're just a year older. We've got, we've got really quite a veteran group there. And so you would hope that a group of players who are, who are mainly on the back end of their career would be playing at their best, and they certainly are. Okay, from at BYU Ballyhoo, his name is Tim Riggins on Twitter. Among his questions is, uh, how's the recovery of uh, Tyson Williams coming along? 
Not that he's out of sight, out of mind, but he's been gone for a while, and I guess we're just kind of all waiting and wondering what the future holds for him. Yeah, I think that's still up in the air, but I know his recovery is going well. I know he's working in his rehab, and, you know, I've been impressed. A lot of times a guy in his position will just kind of disappear, but he's not done that. He's still been a part of the team. We see him at meetings every day, and he's got a smile on his face, and he's still, he's still adding something to our team with his presence. Talked about this off the air, but he's still your team's leading rusher at this point. He's been gone for a while. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he was really good early. Yeah, I kind of miss that guy. <laughs> but uh, but the other guys have done great in in uh, his absence and and like we've said before, young guys there who are who are making improvement. I don't think we saw any snaps from Emmanuel Asupa this past week, and it's fair to say he's been kind of dealing with 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 injuries kind of all year long, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah, he has. He was fairly healthy early on, uh, fairly healthy against Toledo, and then since since then just hasn't quite been himself um, but still hopeful that we'll we'll see him back at full speed sometime within the next couple of weeks. Meantime those two younger backs Finau and Lopini Katoa have really uh, carried the load for you and done a good job with it. They really have and and they've blocked well in protection they've blocked well on some of our jet sweeps and then just getting better and better as runners and, and running tough and making hard yards. Really, really pleased with the progress of those two guys. Okay, a uh, little bit of a, a wardrobe issue here to address. Uh, we should probably do a man in black shout out today before we leave. What do we have here? Well, let, let, let's do the slow reveal for the camera here. I'm a fan of most things country music, but in particular, and I got this from my dad, <laughs> Johnny Cash, the man in black. Yes. Okay. Your text, you have some Texas background as well. Well, I Did that help first, foster it? I, well, certainly, without yeah. question. I spent my 30, first 30 years in Texas, and so <laughs> I come by it honestly. That's awesome. Well, right before we let you go here, um, not, not that this thing's over yet, that there are some games to play, but does it feel like this team has found a solid a footing uh, as you'd hope to find this year and that this is something really to build off of heading into the stretch run? Well, um, I don't know. I, I don't know exactly how I would say it. I have to look back after the the year in its entirety. I think before I can summarize it. But I would say that I think we're definitely headed in the right direction. There have been some some really high highs and some really low lows, and I feel like there have been moments where where we've played really well, and then there have been times when when we when we haven't played certainly up to our potential. But I think um, here of late. We're, we're getting closer to playing to our potential. I think that's a real positive. Like I said earlier, there's still a lot of things that we can improve on and clean up. And I think if we can do that, then, then we'll see us playing as well as we can here towards the end of the season. Jeff, always a pleasure. Thanks for the time and have a great week of prep and uh, best of luck against Idaho State on the weekend. You got it. Thanks, Chris. All right, thank you. That is it for another edition of the Coordinator's Corner. Next week, we visit with Coach Grimes once again and special teams coordinator at Lamb. For Coaches Grimes and Eliza Tuiaki, my name is Greg Grubel. We'll see you again next Monday right here in Studio C on BYU TV for the Coordinator's Corner brought to you by JCWs. We'll talk to you in next week. Go Cougs. So long. City needs me. I bet if I moved in with you, you'd become president. Are you suggesting that our girls will become athletes? They want to win, yes. If I found this pair of basketball sneakers. I think they're magic. Oh